and welcome to Jim versus the man. Oh, no, it's not this guy again. What the hell is happening here today? Uh, obviously, Adam Kokesh is indisposed today, spending time with his beautiful wife. And um, I, I have no idea what they have planned. He just asked me to fill in for the day. So here I am. So I'm going to uh, just open up into some news. I'm going to actually run the show. We have a guest today. Uh, Tom Queter, and that's going to be exciting. We also have uh, and someone taking my place is going to be Comment Pete coming in on the screen on this side. There's Pete. Comment Pete. Uh, he, uh, I brought, I produced a show for him, uh, The Voluntary Option. That's on Wednesdays, 5 p.m. You should uh, definitely join into that. We talk about a lot of uh, politics. Uh, the Voluntary Option is pretty self-explanatory, right? They're uh, exploring the option of the voluntary choice, you know, the voluntary uh, ideals. So uh, he'll be watching your comments today. Take it easy on him. He's going to do the best he can. He's never been a comment uh, watcher before. Uh, I know one of my first time I, I did it, it was pretty exciting. Uh, as you can see, we're in the beautiful, natural uh, world of the Garden of Freedom. I know you guys don't usually get to see this uh, side of it. It looks like we're deep in the thick of it and uh that's because uh, we are we have a lot of tree privacy here in the beautiful garden of freedom i'll so, try to fill your shoes jim i'll do my best that i can promise <laughs> you'll do fine you'll do fine we're gonna have fun with it anyway you know, everybody knows that when i'm running the show you know it's pretty uh pretty lax because I'm, I'm a rookie and i'm just getting this going but uh right hey look at that philip uh Lamy. i don't mean to take over your job already looking at comments you got to push the uh, scroll up a little bit and see the comments button so you can watch the comments uh yeah there you go that uh, he thank you philip uh watching on periscope for leading us into our first story i might as well just jump right into it We're looking at former presidential candidate herman cain he died of covid 19. that's the headline OK, and uh, I want to bring this story up for a couple reasons. One, uh, the guy ran for presidential candidate. He he deserves to be recognized as anybody does. Uh, and it said, but the title, that's my problem with this, is it says former presidential candidate Herman Cain dies of COVID-19. Full stop. No more other explanations. And as we get into the story here. Uh, former Republican presidential can candidate Herman Cain has died weeks after he was diagnosed with COVID-19. According to an announcement made Thursday on his website, he was 74. Uh, you're never ready for the kind of news we are grappling with this morning. Dan Calabrese, the editor of Cain's website, wrote Thursday in a statement. Herman Cain, our boss, our friend, like a father to so many of us, has passed away. Now, it, it's tough to cover this one. I'm trying to be really... Uh, I'm trying not to speak too quickly because, you know, talking about somebody that passed away is always a sensitive topic. But the way they're talking about this is what's important. We go back to the article. It says Kane died at an Atlanta area hospital where he had been critically ill for several weeks, according to Newsmax. Company officials said he had recently joined a Newsmax TV and had planned to launch a new weekly show prior to his death. Kane was admitted to a hospital, and even that right there just sounds weird to me, but Kane was admitted to a hospital, not the hospital, not what a hospital it is, but Kane was admitted to a hospital July 1 after testing positive two days earlier for a novel coronavirus infection. We knew there was a, we knew when he was first hospitalized with COVID-19 that he was going to be a rough fight. Calabrese wrote Thursday, he had trouble breathing and was taken to the hospital by ambulance. We all prayed that the initial meds they gave him would get his breath breathing back to normal. But it became clear pretty quickly that he was in for a battle. Calabrese said doctors were hopeful as recently as five days before his death that Kane would make a recovery. However, because Kane previously beat liver cancer, he was considered at high risk for complications related to COVID-19. Now, that was the first time, that's how long it took me to read that to get to the point where they mention that he had complications for this and he was considered a high risk individual. All the way up until that, like the average attention span of an American reads the title and if anything, the first couple paragraphs, you do that and you assume that he went from, look, I'm a healthy individual. I ran for president and I'm, I was about to start a TV show and I got COVID and I died. 
that's what it that's what it's leading you to believe in my opinion with that with that title and that lead in and and they're very even vague with it with with the underlying conditions that he was considered a high risk complications related to covid-19 we shouldn't be i mean like i said it's a sensitive issue the man died that's not good i actually happen to know somebody uh through family uh an in-laws parent is uh, just recently passed away with COVID-19. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's everywhere, man. It's, it's eerie how everywhere it is. And nobody wants to, to bring up the, the incentives that the doctors are getting for making these declarations that they're making. Nobody wants to talk about that because people are dying in that sensitive topic in itself. Steers people away from thinking about real issues about it, you know, which is sad. Uh, now, now, some people might ask, why are we being pumped with so much fear? What is their end game? What's, I mean, nobody can say the end end game because who knows, you know, but, but why are they using these headlines and using all these stories and using all this death to pump all this fear into us? For that, we go to a Daily Beast article that shows us Trump comes out and says it. Maybe we should delay the presidential election. Figure that out. Now, related to this, before I get into the, a little bit of this article, uh, I'm not saying it's the same thing, but it's eerily reminiscent, in my opinion, uh, of what Putin, uh, Putin just recently did. He's president until 2036, effectively making him the leader of Russia for like 30-something years, like a lifetime ruler which you know come on now hello i know we're not russia but when is it when does the line get drawn when are we going to recognize that that's the direction we're heading and even if they don't do it exactly like putin did it and even if they don't do it in those exact ways they're following the same narratives just doing it with their own flavor and and we're getting locked into the same world so it's horrible the wind is a little tough on my mic um Sorry about that. It's not even windy out here, which is really weird. Maybe. Yeah, I don't even I don't feel know. the breeze. I don't, yeah, hardly feel any breeze. I, I apologize. Hopefully we can um, battle through it. My mic's working right. I'll just take one second to check my audio and make sure I'm on the right microphone. Yes, I'm on the right microphone. So I apologize for that. Um, I'm sorry. So uh, back to... Yes, we should delay the presidential election. Paragraph one, President Donald Trump has, for the first time, publicly suggested delaying November's presidential election, an unprecedented measure which is beyond the powers of the president, obviously. In his latest tweet pushing his entirely unproven pet theory that mail-in ballots somehow make elections more susceptible to voter fraud, Trump wrote that holding the election during the raging pandemic would be dangerous and mold whether it would be best to, quote, delay the election until people can vote properly, securely, and safely. Now, on that note, I don't personally believe that anyone's vote over the last, probably since I've been alive, I'll be 40 next month, uh, has been that. <laughs> I don't think anybody can count their vote as securely and properly and safely counted. You know, I mean, let, you know, do some reading. Anyways, back to the article. Despite his posturing, Trump has absolutely no legal power to follow through on the proposal to delay the vote. His incendiary tweet came minutes after the Commerce Department announced the U.S. economy had just suffered its worst quarter on record. Uh, I'm going to cover that as well. This is Donald Trump's tweet here. With universal mail-in voting, not absentee voting, which is good. 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent election in history. It will be great embarrassment to the USA. Delay the election until people can properly, securely, and safely vote. So that's the quote from the president right there. So we can dissect that. 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent. Because of some mail-ins. Because, I mean, are you serious? Look at what happened in, uh, what was it, 2000 when... Uh, uh, Gore got screwed or whatever. Or, yeah, Bush. Just forget about it. I don't even know why I'm bringing that up. 
Uh, delay the election is a very dangerous idea. Everybody already knows it. Obviously, the president doesn't have the power to do this. He has to go through Congress and Congress has to approve it. But look at what's going on right now with, with the stimuluses and the infighting. You never know what these clowns are going to do. You literally never know what these clowns are going to do. Tomorrow, the Democrats who have been swearing this way can just totally change their platform and, and it'll cause uproar for like a week and then people are going to just consider it normal again it's absolutely insane now back to the article just for a little bit more it has been long predicted that trump would try to discredit the election last week presumptive democratic nominee joe biden warned donors that the president will attempt to indirectly steal the 2020 election by poisoning his base against the idea of mail-in ballots a voting method that more people than ever are expected to use to minimize the risk of catching the novel coronavirus, which is silly, but that's the world that they're pushing on. So that's why everybody's trying to go for the mail-in ballots. So, and then now they're saying, no, we, we don't want to do the mail-in ballots. We want to be able to seal this thing a little bit easier. Mail-in ballots are probably too difficult for them to forge. So they're trying to, trying to keep it easy on themselves. Uh, so, so, so I just want to move ahead here. Um, let me see. Uh, just down in the article towards the end of it, there's a quote here. The president has no authority whatsoever to delay the action, said Josh Douglas. He's an election law professor at the University of Kentucky. It's an attack on the legitimacy of our democracy, which is illegitimate in the first place. Uh, it's something that every elected official, Republican and Democrat, should speak out against. All it does is undermine people's faith and legitimacy in our elections. What Trump is doing is really scary, Douglas said, pointing to the concern that it would seemingly lay the groundwork to potentially cont contest an election that he loses. That's the part I want to read. wanted to read right there. It seems to me like that that that's inevitable he's going to i it had he lost against hillary clinton i don't think he would have accepted the loss there would have been you know he would have been using his billions of dollars to 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 go crazy you know to to challenge it and challenge the rules like bush did and get recounts and do whatever he had to do I, i'm not uh, fully up on all that the process is how they get away with this stuff but that's what they do so um so next i want to talk about how they're going to get away with this because it all just seems so stupid how can we fall for this stuff how can, how can we literally be so duped that we're like yeah yeah you just usurping all of our uh uh rules we've been playing by forever and just changing the rules now to to, to keep you in power somebody that's so controversial the country is so split there's people that hate him so much they 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 I, you know i can't even come up with the words they hate him so much there's people that love him so much i can't come up with the words because they love him so much it's so polarized and you want to just say yeah let's just extend it a little bit fuck what everybody screw what everybody thinks you know frick what everybody thinks <laughs> i already screwed it up anyway so i might as well just go with it um so anyways back to the question how how, 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 how can they get away with this stuff? I just don't understand. And uh, I call it a carrot on a stick. I call the stimulus packages the carrot on the stick because that's what they're doing. They're doing the, the Newsweek article that we can go to, Trump says stimulus checks may go higher amid Senate GOP spending split. That's, he's, he's like baiting it out there. You might get more checks. You might get even higher amounts you know he i swear i've heard him at least a couple times saying he wants to get the economy back on track without spending so much of the money taking you know because he'll 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 mention it as taking money from the american people and we need to grow it through business and doing it this way and that way but then when it suits them you know yeah let's give everybody free money let's hook them up you know 